nothing is better on a sultry summer day than a picnic and a juicy bowl of fruit. Well, for some of you, it's probably an ice-cold beer. But before you take another bite, what if I told you the person who picked this sweet strawberry was a slave, bought, sold, and exploited? Around the world, 27 million men, women, and children are slaves. And although you may be thinking, okay, but slavery happens over there, right? It's actually happening here. Many of the food products we consume in North America have been built on the backs of slave labor. Let me show you the expansive fields in Immokalee, Florida. Yes, the United States is home to some of the most brutal atrocities of human rights, specifically within the strawberry, orange, and tomato fields. The documentary Food Chains exposes the shocking degree of exploitation that is happening in America right now, where migrant workers are beaten down in a class system that has stripped them of their voice. In John Bow's book, Nobodies, he reveals a Florida-based food chain that connects food conglomerates with contractors. Shady contractors lure migrant workers into a life of exploitation where they lose control over their lives. What if that was you in the fields or your child, forced to work 12-hour days with no shade, breaks, or pay, slapped, kicked, pistol-whipped, locked in a U-Haul truck, and shackled in chains at night. Now, often, traffickers prey on migrant workers from Guatemala, Haiti, and Mexico. But don't think for a moment that U.S. citizens are safe. In 2007, Ron Evans was sentenced to 30 years in federal prison. You see, Evans recruited vulnerable U.S. citizens from homeless shelters. Homeless shelters across the Southeast, including Miami and Tampa, with the promise for a better life. But instead, they were locked in a modern-day slave camp, often coined the harvest of shame. If we eat, we are affected. But there's hope. A movement for morality has started, spearheaded by the CIW, the Coalition of Immokalee Workers. They actually started in a church basement. Farmers got together to create more dignified working conditions. And since they've begun, they've assisted in the prosecution of seven slavery rings in Florida, setting 1,200 people free. Now, I first learned about slavery or slave labor when I was living in India. Mothers dressed in saris sit at the roadside, some with 10 children at their feet. When I'd pass by, the children would run up to me begging, Madam, Madam, rupees, rupees. Often they were barefoot, covered in dust, with big eyes filled with desperation. It was a local man at a chai shop that told me about the epidemic India is facing. The children are going missing. Millions of children each year are forced into slave labor, often in rice, tea, and sugar plantations, that is then shipped to North America. If we eat, we are affected. Children are being deprived of an opportunity to thrive yet provide us with rice, tea, and sugar so we can. Now, what is slavery? I want to get really clear about the definition of slave labor. I'm not talking about lousy wages or egotistically narcissistic CEOs. I'm talking about people who cannot walk away, 
people who are forced to work for no pay, people who are controlled 24-7 by their masters through violence. Now, slavery lurks in every crack and crevice of the globe and is most pronounced on industries that rely on low or unskilled labor. Now, a lot of you may think, okay, but isn't slavery about forced prostitution in third world countries like Thailand or Cambodia? Yes, you're right. That makes up 22% of slavery. 10% is state-imposed labor but a whopping 68% of slavery is used to produce the goods and services you and I rely on daily. Our food, our care, our shelter. Let's look at a couple other food products. Chocolate. Chocolate is one of the world's favorite treats, including myself. And it's a multi-billion dollar industry. The majority, the majority of chocolate companies purchase cocoa from Western Africa. But there's a dark underbelly to this delicious treat. Cocoa farmers often earn less than $2 a day. And in order to remain competitive in the market, some of them use slave labor, specifically child labor. Little Omari was just 10 years old when her impoverished parents sold her to brokers. Other children are coerced or kidnapped. Her day begins at 6 a.m., and she uses a machete to cut down the pods from the cocoa trees. But each strike has the opportunity to slice her soft flesh. Many of the children have scars on their legs, back, and arms from the knives. Amari then packs the pods into 100-pound sacks and drags them through the forest. If she isn't fast enough, her little body is beaten. If we eat, we are affected. Children are being raped of their childhood so we can indulge in chocolate goods. Now, slavery doesn't just taint your candy bars. It's also on your dinner table. Let's look at seafood. When I was in Thailand, I remember sitting on the docks, toes in the water, listening to the murmur of the attendants at sea. But through my research, I was horrified to discover the suffering that's happening in one of my favorite countries. The respected Guardian newspaper conducted an extensive investigation and they found that people are being bought and sold like cattle onto Thai fishing boats. They're responsible for catching the trash fish, fish not okay for human consumption. This fish is then sold to commercial Thai prawn farms as prawn feed, and then the prawns are sold to leading supermarkets around the world, including in the UK and North America. Survivors who escaped spoke of their personal nightmare, which included 20-hour shifts, torture, methamphetamines to keep them working. If you were a female, rape and sexual assault were a daily practice. One survivor even saw his friend being murdered, tied limb to limb to four boats, and ripped apart at sea. If we eat, we are affected. People are being deprived of their human rights to provide us with prawns on ice. As a clinical counselor, I care about humanity, as I'm sure many of you do. And I imagine a world where people are being put before profit. My beloved Nana died just this month in May. And as I sat with her, on her deathbed, holding her beautifully wrinkled hand. I started reflecting on the legacy that she left behind and the impact that she had on my life. At a very young age, my Nana taught me to advocate for those without a voice. And she's right. As capitalism and consumerism grows, so will slave labor. This is how it works. 
The fast food chains and the supermarkets, they hold the power today. And the suppliers, they need to meet that price demand at whatever cost. But as consumers, we have power too. We can put pressure at the bottom to create change at the top. And that is exactly what the CIW is doing in Immokalee right now. They put pressure on corporations, they put pressures on consumers, and they've created the Fair Food Program. What is it? Consumers and corporations just pay one penny more per pound. One penny more per pound for tomatoes. This simple act doubles a farmer's wages triples a farmer's dignity, and costs just you and I 44 cents more per year. McDonald's, Whole Foods, Taco Time, Trader Joe's have all signed on. <laughs> yeah, it's good. But this is only one state. This is only one microcosm of the bigger picture. As Bernie Sanders has said himself, woo woo, Bernie! <laughs> How many other Immokalees are out there? How many other Immokalees are out there? If we eat, we are affected. And we need to take action. So what can we do? Number one, choose fair Trade or fair food? <laughs> when I first learned about slave labor, I wanted to boycott certain products. But I quickly realized that is also harming the farmers who practice ethically. Thank you. <laughs> By choosing fair trade, or if you're in the U.S., fair food, it tries to ensure that the workers were treated and paid fairly. If your supermarket does not have one of these certifications, ask some questions, demand they do so. Number two, get techie. There's a lot of really cool apps out there, including slaveryfootprint.org. Slaveryfootprint.org actually allows you to calculate how many slaves are working for you? And then make a more conscious decision based on that awareness. Number three, start a movement. Right now, today, you and I can start a movement. A movement to let our prime minister know that we do not accept slave labor as part of our country's legislation. Please go to slaveinyourfood.com slaveinyourfood.com, sign the petition, and change someone's life today. If we eat, we are affected. In one of the wealthiest continents on Earth, people are still living as slaves. As the CIW is doing, and as my precious Nana said, we need to band together and give a voice to those souls who've been silenced. Will you join me? Yeah. Thank you.